Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Code Central. Today I'm going to talk about request timeout middleware which comes with ASP.NET Core. It is supported in .NET 8.0 and onewards. So .NET 8.0 and .NET 9. These are the two versions of .NET which allows it and it comes out of the box. You don't have to add an extra NuGet package. It's part of the framework itself. So what is a request timeout middleware? If we want to apply a timeout, then you, know, you have to write custom code and whatnot to do that. The request timeout middleware allows you to do it very elegantly. So the way it works is you can add a request timeout middleware into the dependency injection calling the add request timeouts extension method. And then after you create the app, which is the using the builder, web application builder dot build, you can do app dot use request timeout. That is the middleware, which attaches the middleware into the request pipeline. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that the use request timeout middleware has to be after use HTTPS redirections middleware. If we are using the HTTPS redirection, then it has to be after that. And once we do this to the request timeout middleware is now added to the pipeline, but that doesn't mean all the application will start respecting it. For adding request timeout into a HTTP method, you have to use one of the few solutions. So for example, if we are using a minimal API, then you can either use with request timeout this extension. And here you can provide how much time you want to wait for the request to timeout. That's one way of doing. The other way of doing, of course, is using an attribute, which is here. You can use an attribute for request timeout. And to the request timeout here, you can give the milliseconds. And in the milliseconds, you can provide how many milliseconds you want. So I'm giving 2000 millisecond here, which is equivalent to two second here. So we can either use this mechanism with the extension method, or we can use the attribute option. We should use either of the two. If we are using controllers instead of minimal API, then we can use the same attribute option on top of the method for attaching a timeout to a particular HTTP endpoint. Now we can also have timeout across the application. I'm going to show that in a couple of minutes. Now here in this method, what I'm doing is this is the out of box weather forecast method, which comes when you create a SP.NET application. All I'm doing here is I'm creating a delay for a task. I'm doing a task dot delay and I'm delaying for 10 seconds. Now, given that I have a timeout of two seconds, what is going to happen is after two seconds, it's going to throw an exception because here I am passing the context dot request reported. Now, this is important. Here, I'm taking the HTTP context and for the delay, I am passing the request aborted from the context because request aborted what is going to be triggered by the HTTP request timeout middleware. So then what is going to happen is the delay is going to break. It's going to get a task cancel exception. And from here, I'm going to return a status code of request timeout. Now in a standard application, instead of doing a task dot delay, here you might be making an HTTP call out or you might be making a database call, which might take time, in which case you can always do task.run or task. So instead of task.delay here, let me show. It's going to be same. It's going to 
evade. So you can do a task dot run here. And when you do a task dot run, you can pass an action which can be a call or a function to calling out. And along with that, you can see there's a cancellation token in both action as well as uh, func. So there's a cancellation token. So in place of cancellation token, you can send this context dot request aborted cancellation token, which is going to do the same thing. It's going to throw a task cancel exception, in which case you can return HTTP 408 status code. So this is the code that I have, and this code will never be executed because you know I am waiting for 10 seconds. We have a two seconds of delay. Now I'm going to run this. Now one thing to keep in mind is that the request timeout pipeline will not be triggered in debug mode. That is the implementation right now. It does not get triggered during the debug mode. So I have to run this without debugging. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a start without debugging. If I do a start without debugging, then only the request timeout middleware will be triggered. So I started the application. Now here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try this out, execute, and after two seconds, I'm going to get a response. And you can see after two seconds, I got a status response of 408 which is expected based on the implementation. So that's at a high level how you can implement a request timeout out of box. And you can see it is so easy to do either this extension method or using the attribute. And if you're using a normal controller, not a minimal API, then you have to go the attribute route. Now I'm going to quickly show the attribute route also. And I'm going to click the same thing. 2000 millisecond and I'm going to get rid of this code because it's not needed. We want only one of them. And this is what attribute, the request timeout attribute is what you will be using when you are using a standard controller, not a minimal API. So let me again go ahead and start without debugging again. And now if I go try it out, execute, I should see the exact same behavior and we can see the exact same behavior. Response code of 200. So this is at a high level what we can do. Now let's look into a few other implementation details. So what if we want to configure multiple endpoints and we want to configure the same request timeout policy? So if we want to do that, the, we can use something called uh, policy. So we can attach a policy name and we can use the policy with the request timeout extension method. So here also, if you look into the request timeout attribute, let me get rid of these. Now there are two options. One is the policy name second one is the millisecond. So I was using the millisecond. Now I'm going to go ahead and use the policy name. Same thing for if I try it out here, dot with request timeout, you can see with request timeout also has policy object, a policy name, and a timeout, which was a time span. Now policy name can be used here as well as in the attribute. So let me show the policy name implementation and for the policy name let me pass a policy name here let's say the policy name is policy now for configuring the policy what we have to do is in the add request timeout there is a delegate which is option and we can use this option to define Let's name it as options, just to be consistent. And here we can say options dot add policy, and we can add a policy and from seconds of two. 
back to what our policy was is before just adding a policy name now the same policy can be used for multiple application using the name now let me go ahead and again start without debugging now let me go here try it out execute and after two seconds i should see the same timeout as before apart from the policy name we can also use something called a default policy so here we can go ahead and we can say options dot and you can see there's an option of default policy so for default policy we can say request timeout policy and here for the request timeout policy it has a timeout and for the timeout i can say the default is let's keep it as one and the policy has two seconds and let me get rid of this completely so now the default policy should take action so let me again start without debugging so let's go try it out here and see this time within a second i got the response of 402 408 and it is because i have a default policy which is asking it to time out within a second and here i'm not using any policy in the method so it's going to affect all the apis globally will be impacted by the default policy so here we have the default policy now for the default policy there are a couple of other things we can do just going to show it so now for the default policy apart from that we can also have something called status code so here if we want the status code to be changed so let's say status code of let's say gateway timeout so the default timeout status code is gateway timeout so we can set this up here and then we can also write the response ourselves so we can do this is showing out of box implementation it's going to be we don't need the timeout we just need the context and we can do a wait context dot response dot write request timeout so i'm going to first show just the timeout status code and then we will show the right timeout response now both the timeout status code and the right response can also be done for the add policy so for the add policy we can use request timeout policy so we can do here new request timeout policy and for the request timeout policy we can have the same thing and we can have the timeout we can also have default status code and we can also have a right response the, the exact same thing can be done for a policy when we are attaching a custom policy and this is the default policy so let me go ahead and again do a start without debugging now let me try this out and this time i don't see it because i still have the custom code which is which is here specifically throwing uh, the specifically using this so let me change this code let me just get rid of the try catch block because i don't have to now i'm having a specific response code so let me start without debugging and now let me go here try it out execute and this time we see the error response as 504 because this is the error response i provided now let's go back and this time let's just change the right response we don't need the response code because we are 
providing a specific timeout. Let's try out this one and let's, let's change the sales code to something else. So let's do a back gateway. But first, let's try this one. Here also, let's use the back gateway before we go to the policy. Now we try it out, execute. We can see the 502 coming up. So we'll try to execute this in Postman instead. And here we can see we get a 502 and we see the request timeout because in Swagger, this is not going to show up. So we'll see the response body in the Postman and it matches what we are returning, which is request timeout. Now here, let's change it and make it as policy request timeout. And let's use just like before. And this time let's use with request timeout. And let's give the policy name as policy without debugging. And this time the policy should behave the same way. So let's go here, let's re-execute. And we can see here the same 502 bad gateway and we can see that policy request timeout. So that is all I wanted to cover in today's video. As you can see, this is such a simple way of creating a timeout policy or a default timeout across your application for all the API or to specific API. And this is something which is very handy when you are dependent on or your service is dependent on external HTTP endpoint or databases, which might take a lot of time. In those cases, it might be better to return a timeout instead of waiting forever for a better user experience. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to this channel and you think you are getting value out of this channel, please subscribe to the channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.